Cheryl Kirk Dugan. I'm professor of religion at Shaw University Divinity School in Raleigh, North Carolina. Shaw just celebrated its 150th anniversary. It was the first HBCU or historically black college university in the South, started by Martin and Sarah Tupper to help people who are new to freedom get an education. In terms of what it is, womanism has a long history. I mean, the Sojourner Truth and Harriet Tubmans, who were so brave and bold and wanted to help educate people and get people out of slavery, they were womanist. We did not have a language, but the actions and activity, the focus on lifting as we climb with the black club women, club women's movement, issues of empowerment, of educating, of helping others to go forward. Alice Walker coined the term womanist and publicized it in her book, In Search of Our Mother's Gardens, Womanist Prose, which I think has a 1983 publication date. There were some other articles that appeared before that book, both by Walker and some other thinkers. Now with womanist religious studies, there's also a trajectory of, the, of several scholars who are using womanist principles in literature and in other disciplines. Our awareness is a lot around religion, although because of the way womanist thought is constructed, it's very interdisciplinary. So womanism is a way of thinking and a way of life, a way of doing analysis and a way of living. So for example, because womanist is focused on justice, we want to expose all injustices. So whether it's suppression or oppression from class or gender, age, ability, sexual orientation, um, gender, ecology, whatever the issue is, we are very intent on saying what would be the just issue here? Where is the injustice? And sometimes that's in the form of violence. And usually it's almost always violence, whether it violates a person's own selfhood or whether it's a system that is set to make sure a particular group of people are scapegoated or left out. And not all womanists are Christian. Many of them are because it came out of women who were already Christian who were working on advanced degrees in religious studies. There are womanists who are Muslim. There are, and also it's not only people in the United States. There are Muslim, there are women who practice African traditional religions and other kinds of spiritualities that do womanist analysis. To live to be as a womanist means that one understands respect for all people. And one of Walker's, Walker's definitions, loves love, loves roundness, loves all people. The only time you take your, separate yourself from other people is in matters of health. So it's a very inclusive, understanding of a way to do analysis and intellectual engagement, as well as a way to live. So as a lived experience, then it becomes about empowering others to love others, to respect others. And again, I only separate myself from others if that person is toxic or that experience is toxic and it's not for my health and well-being. Great question. I have an undergraduate degree in voice and piano, and then a master's in voice. Then the first time God called me to ministry, I said no. The second time I said yes, and I was in seminary within a week. And it was while I was in seminary that I learned about patriarchy and oppression. I didn't experience uh, oppression because of gender that I was aware of it as a child or a young adult because I grew up in a home where my God was said my parents were partners. So they were very supportive. I also had a very supportive church. And so I always got to do speeches and played piano and organ from the time I was church from the time I was 11 until I graduated from high school. So every Sunday I was either on the piano or organ, just depending on which choir I was singing. While I was in seminary, when a group of women said, let's form a women's group, well, I want to know why do we need a women's group? I'm accustomed to being around guys. And that's when I learned about these stories. Then as I moved into the PhD program, I was, and at this time, by this time, Drs. Katie Cannon, um, Cheryl Thompson, Jill Suja, Sociology Religion, there's uh, Dolores Williams, and Jacqueline, Dr. Jacqueline Grant, who's at the Interdenominational Center in 
Theological Center in Atlanta. They were finishing up their work at Union Theological Seminary, and if people are interested, there's a great video about how womanist theology bloomed and emerged from Union. And so as I was doing my work, I learned about them, I read about them, I said, absolutely, because traditionally and historically, black theologians, mostly men, problematized the issue of race. Early feminists problematized the issue of gender. I mean, when Gloria Stein was getting ready to write uh, her books and things, she said, I think it was a 20 year class reunion, and they realized, wait a minute, we've got all this education, all this experience, but we're still all oppressed. And so Dr. Katie Cannon said, yeah, I get black theology problematizes race, and historically at that time, um, feminist theology or just feminism problematizes gender. I need an umbrella, a rubric, if you will, for working on the lives and empowering poor black women. So in other words, class was omitted. And so she knew about Alice Walker's work and took that concept as sort of an umbrella under which to do the work and after and sort of spread from person to person. Have you heard of? Oh yeah, okay. And reading of the books became more available. For example, when I did my dissertation, I did a section on womanism as opposed to the whole thing. But when I did the revision of my dissertation, then I did a womanist reading of the spirituals because by that time there were other books and I could do it with, with legitimacy and with integrity.